Hello to you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. But then again, you know that, don't you? Because that's why you've tuned in. Today I'm joined by Sean from Barnsley, a.k.a. The Dripping Tap. And he's going to enlighten us with his questions and topics he wants to talk about. How are you doing, Dripping Tap? Are you all right? Still dripping, Russ. Still dripping. Still dripping. Yeah. Right then. Fire away then, Sean. The floor is yours. First question on the Sky Card from Friday night, which I think it was a pretty poor show, a bit like Eddie Earn's dress sense. <laughs> I'm do you know what, Russ? I think he's trying to model his scene on James Bond from 80s. Right, can I've I seen just him on I felt like can I just stop you there? He's known in the trade as Eddie Hills, not her no more. It's Eddie Hills. So that's just, let me just point that out to you. So could you refer to him as Eddie Hills from now on? All right, Sean, the dripping tap. Go on. <clears throat> Anxious again. T T uh, Leon Richards, Timo Lane. What did you think about that fight, Russ? I thought it was garbage, and I want to know why Leon Richards, uh, Leron Richards, has uh, vacated his 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 belt. I mean, what's all that about? Why don't they just keep his belt and get some defenses, get a Lonsdale belt won outright, and learn your craft? Because what did he learn out of that fight that he couldn't have learned fighting Willie Hutchinson? Hey. Well, the. Between me and you, Russ, he might as well have been in Jimmy in the punch bag, mighty. Yeah. It would I mean, it was just a it was just terrific. I don't understand why not. I don't understand why I just couldn't we just can't take these fights. It's, uh, nobody's fighting anybody other nowadays. They're all trying to go these intercontinental routes and the British belt, in my opinion, is getting discarded. I mean it's the best belt in boxing. And so you'd want to win it outright, wouldn't you, and go down in history? I don't get it. There's no respect being shown towards Lonsdale Belt, and it's quite upsetting. I agree with you. If you Lonsdale Belt, if you're a British British fighter, really, that should be a, really your main achievement and goal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Old school. Yeah. I, well, I, I just thought it was brutal, bad matchmaking, a mismatch. Everything that I don't like about boxing, Russ. Yeah. Everything I don't like. Go on then. What next? Uh, prospects. What do you think to this on Sky's card? Every time we watch, I watch a Sky card, the top fighters always got a prospect on. Uh, you mean like Billy Joe Saunders has got kids on in his stable, Bellew has got kids in his stable, Joshua has, and uh, Dylan White. They've all got prospects, haven't they, or fighters that they're managing that they're going on Sky. Is that what you mean, yeah? Yeah, they, they're all getting airtime. There's other top fighters out there, Russ, that are not getting, on, not getting matched properly and fights properly. And I just wonder if... I don't, is, is Eddie Hills taking money out of these stars' purses to let the prospects on? Uh, I don't really know. I don't know the financial situations of it. But if Eddie earn has got a fighter like Billy Joe Saunders and he's top at Bill and Billy's managing kids and he wants to put them on show, it's easier for Eddie Earn to, to do that because the, the Billy's going to make sure he wants to get his kids out and it's less hassle and they're all working together and there's obviously a bit of trust there because Eddie, Eddie works with Billy. So for Billy to put his fighters on, it's, it's less aggravation for her because the worst thing about being a promoter is pull-outs. You know, we're a week to go or two weeks to go. It's pull-outs are shocking and, and they, destroy, they destroy shows. So with... Eddie working with Billy and Billy having his own fighters. And same with other guys he works with. It, the, the, it's easy to work with them. So they're keeping it in-house, aren't they? That's what they're doing. They're keeping it in-house. And this Cold War that's going on, it's shocking at the moment. Shocking. That, that's, that's what I think. I think it's just... It's killing. Do you think it... 
Do you think it's because it times, or do you think it's just convenience for Eddie Hills? Both, of, both really. I think it, Eddie's a businessman. He's an hard worker. He's going to want to put fights on uh, that that are going to happen. And if it's easy to work with Billy Joe, because Billy's got kids, or Bell you, because he knows Bell you, and he can, it, it's it's easy to negotiate, isn't it? Rather than him negotiating, we say Frank Warren or. Mick Hennessy or Dennis Hobson or something like that, where there's a bit of a bit of bad blood. It's easy to just work with these people who are his mates, isn't it? I suppose they're doing the work for him. Eddie doesn't need to go out and sign people when Bellew, White, Joshua, and uh, Saunders are all doing it for him because they're all more or less guaranteed dates on Sky, aren't they? With their fighters as, as well as fighting on their undercards. So he's keeping it in house. So. Basically, it's a uh, clever marketing scheme, really, by uh, Eddie, because uh, it's just not as convenient, Russ. It's 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 the fighters again. They're, they're giving all the air. They're getting the, air the air time, and it's all. It's like they're being scouts for Eddie. So really, in Eddie's in in his, in in respect to Eddie, he's a very clever businessman, isn't he? Well, he understands the game, doesn't he? I mean, look at up here the EIS, the Olympians, and that. Joshua trains there, and he and he signed two of them from last Olympics. Joshua, and they all fight on Sky, and it's all done for Eddie, isn't it? Really, Joshua trains up there. His fighters train up there. They, they, they've got it made, haven't they? They've took advantage of loopholes and manipulated the situations for financial gain, and that's what boxing allows you to do. I know it's wrong, and it's not fair on other other people because it's not a level playing field, but. Until somebody comes out and does something about it, it's just going to keep going on and on and on. It's been going on for 10 years up there now, and it's still going on now. So it's the wild, wild west, isn't it? Not what we can do about it. We can highlight it, but it'll always be, it'll always happen till, till, it's, till somebody comes in and says, right, enough's enough. And then, then people are the fans. They've just got to come to the table and say, we're not paying for this no more. We're not going to shows. We're not buying pay per view. We're not paying subscriptions. We're not doing it. When the fans do that, then it'll all start to unravel, and, and it'll it'll probably be good for the sport. They'll strip it bare and start again because <clears throat> there's people not getting chances, isn't there? But it needs it is what it is. It needs dying again, don't you think, Russ? What? It needs dying again. I I picked up since I've been watching your channel points you've been put, putting out about that about Sheffield and oh. it's things that you don't get to find out that like where he's got obviously he's got Joshua and McCracken and everybody up there and they'll be telling him about no talent that's coming in and out but it's like the, there's no place for any other promoters now he's, he's took he's took it all hasn't he yeah and and and. He does right if he can do it. It's it's not illegal what he's doing. He's a businessman and he's only doing what Frank would have done if he'd have thought about it. I don't know, but obviously that EIS is that's the conveyor belt for the minute. Now they've got it all bought. They've got it all sewn up, even down to selling hoodies on YouTube Matchroom. Now they've got it all figured out. But good luck to them because they have been a breath of fresh air for boxing, but they're also starting to. Kick boxing in nuts, really. At the moment, I think I think they're kicking it in nuts. It's a bit of overkill. Some that well, not summit fights. A lot of fights are not happening. Tell me what super middleweight fights are happening. Are we going to have no. Saunders, Joe Bank, Saunders, Ryder, Saunders, Callum Smith, Saunders, Andrade? Yeah, we're going to have that. Saunders, Canelo. We, what, what, Saunders, Golovkin. I mean, these are all Dazone and Sky fighters. No, it seems to be happening, does it? They can't. Put him in with anybody. Put your stoners in with Martin Murray. Come on. Horrible. Car crash. Car crash. Oh, then what's the next question? Uh, I was just going to mention Billy Joe Saunders' prospect, Deontay Dixon. Yeah. And uh, Angelo Dragoni, who we fought. I thought that Angelo Dragoni, Dragoni, sorry, what a tough kid. I enjoyed the fight and he roughed him up. And the lad from Sheffield, it was a good test. And I think he looked good. At least fight were competitive, Russ. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, 
I don't agree with it. He's, Macklin said he's like Sugar Ray Leonard, didn't he? Or Johnny Nelson, one of them. Well, oh, Michael, he's getting, Michael. he's getting, he's getting, he's getting as bad as Johnny, isn't he? God, I just couldn't believe what Johnny Nelson come out with. In in some of the statements that he comes out with, Macklin, when they said sugar, when they said sugar Ray Leonard, God, talk about putting a kid on a pedestal to be knocked down, eh? It might be. We don't know. He might, he might go through weights. Yeah, he might do. I hope he does. He's a local man. I hope he does. And he's, he seems uh, he seems a sort of young man. He seems pretty grounded. He loved his mum and all that. I like that, them comments at end. That's good. I love my mum, you know. He should love his mum, shouldn't he? Uh, what else do you want to talk about off that show? Uh, Shannon. Shannon Courtney next year. Now, against the Polish lass. From where Shannon Courtney's come from, she has to be given respect because obviously boxing has changed her life. She's sorted herself out and she's she's done all right, hasn't she? But as regards ability-wise, she she could be in a world title fight in the next fight. And this is where this is what makes women boxing look a little bit poor, doesn't it? I think. But she has to be given respect for what she's done and where she how she's turned her life around. But She's never going to be like the Team GB girls, is she? Like, you know, Jonas or Savannah. She's not going to have their skills, is she? Savannah Marshalls, Jonas and Shannon, uh, Chantel Cameron. But she's she's a bit ferocious and she's she's just fat knockout and she's quite exciting and she wants to have a tear up. So we have to get behind her, although the rest of it is... is Quite hyped. She's quite hyped up, isn't she? Because she's at match them. So good luck to her. But I'd like to see her have a couple more fights before she goes for a world title. But we'll see, won't we? What do you think, Sean? Basically, same as you. I thought it was a uh, scrappy fight, but I thought she'd come out neat, uh, neat and tidy. And then I thought it was a great, a good knockout, Russ. Yeah. Great knockout. Well, then what next? The main event? No, uh, Benson. Benson and O'Reilly it might as well have been main event. Which statement Big John come out with? Yeah? Do you know Johnny Nelson, right? Johnny, I know you're watching. So listen here. Listen very clearly. We know. Johnny, why do you come out with something every show, Johnny? You come out with something that's outrageous and so not true that... I think you do it for attention because you, you want to feel relevant in the role that you're doing. But uh, to say that James Tennyson beats Tank Davis is shocking, shocking, appalling. You're either incompetent, which means you need sacking for saying that, or you're doing it for attention, which means you need sacking. Either way, Johnny. Whatever money you've had from Sky, consider it severance pay. Take the train, get out of Dodge, go now, resign, Johnny Nelson. I'm calling on you to resign. I'm calling on all our car boxing fans to get this cretin told on Twitter, at Sky, Johnny Nelson, his name. Get this man told that he must resign. Go now. Sooner the better. I don't know, what do you think, uh, Sean? It won't just be on Tay Davis, it will Lopez. Did you see Tennyson fight Farmer, Farmer from America? Tabby. Bloody hell, what? Russell, is the man on chemicals? He needs six months off in the Priory. I says to needs- Johnny Nelson, what have you what has you been smoking, Johnny? Because whatever it is, I need an ounce of it quick. I don't know. He's obviously he's got to be smoking wacky backy, hasn't he, Johnny? Oh, oh, he's got a big, massive bottle bong in house and he's just lighting it up all day. And the way with fairies, he's got to be because no sane man will go on live television and say, tell you what, Tennyson, he beats Tank Davis. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Shocking, mate. Shocking. Shocking. So... Well, what's the next question? Saunders one. Yeah, I'll just say that. I thought for a second, did, 
they were going to, as he got job at Tennyson's man, man, to be his manager because bloody hell, we, we statements like that, man. The man's got to be on chemicals. I, I've never heard out like it, like you say. So when he's off uh, that uh, commentating thing at Sky, the better. Yeah. He's a local man. He's a local man, Russ. I like him, but he just talks balls, doesn't he? Do you know what Johnny can be likable, but when he goes off and he, when he does when he goes on IFL and he does his yardy badman routine, he starts talking like he a yardy. <clears throat> He starts coming out with all that blood stuff and all this and giving it the big one. I don't like him when he does that because I think, I think he's an idiot doing that, carrying off like that. And then when he comes out with comments like that on Sky, it's shocking. Uh, he's obviously been told to do that or he's an idiot for saying it. Either way, get gone. But there has been other stuff I've seen him do. I saw him doing some presenting years ago. I remember being in jail watching it on television. And it was BBC calendar team or look off team, and they were doing some presenting. I think it might, might have been a, a, a some seaside resort or something. I thought it came across all right, but you get Johnny talking boxing, and he, he loses his shit, doesn't he? He loses his head, doesn't he, Johnny, when he comes out with outlandish statements, and it's got to be just for for, for controversial talking points. It's got to be. We're talking about a guy here that's won a world title. Come on, and reigned for seven years. I mean, that was the game, doesn't he? But coming out with stuff like that, he's got to be trolling, surely. He must, and and if he's trolling, he's been told to do it. He's whipping boy, then, isn't he? It's just shocking, man, from Johnny. Johnny, come see me. Don't you think all the Sky pundits are puppets on strings, anyway, Russ? Apart from Carl Froch. Yeah, they're all they all are apart from the Cobra. All the rest of them are hanging out the back of them of uh, beams. And Eddie and all them, they're hanging out at the back of them. So it's no good. It's no good. But uh, not as bad as Darren Barker, though, is it? Promoting matchroom boxing hoodies for 35 quid on YouTube. I mean, is that where it's come to for him? <laughs> Times must be hard, Russ. Times must be hard. Trying to stay relevant, knocking hoodies out. I've got about 30 in there. Can't sell them. <laughs> right. I'll have one for now, pal. You'll have one for note, will you? I bet you will. Right, next question. Right. We've got to put Johnny there. Billy Joe Saunders. Get my paperwork down. Right, Russ. He missed out on Canela 5. Top and bottom in it. I might get some stick for it. But do you think it's because... He's not dedicated enough. That really said he, he, he wants in shape in enough time in eight weeks. If he's going to be best and we're going to be an elite fighter, he should be he should be in shape, not for the year like people say, or a, a decade or two. Don't you agree with me? Yeah. Uh, he's got to be fit all year round, Bill, hasn't he? <clears throat> he looked like he was gassing a bit, didn't he? Middle of five. Oh. Mark, Mark Tibbs told him to take a round off, didn't he? I love him as a, a fighter, Russ. He's a fantastic talent, probably the best we've had, but you can see he has weight issues when he fights. And Back end of round, I, I'll give you the perfect example. He was fantastic against Eubank Jr. He boxed him brilliant for, for six rounds, but it was life and death for last, for, from that stretch. Because Eubank, he's got a good chin and he's strong. But Billy Joe Son has also proved to me in that fight that he's got a good chin. But I saw him, he was blowing out every hole in his body, Russ, in that fight. <laughs> what? <are you? laughs> and I just think that when he fights Canelo, being up and down, I call them elevator fights like Ricky Hatton, yeah? Elevator fighters, yeah? When they're up and down, I think <laughs> that they get caught high at top level because it's fine things like that that matter. Yeah, yeah. Well, if Billy had fought Callum Smith last night or Canelo or Golovkin or Danny Jacobs, he'd have got beat, wouldn't he, on that performance? But you've got to say he's been out of ring a year and he's just got back with Mark Tibbs, so we have to give him that fight as a chewing up fight. But he's got to be in a he's got to be in a big fight now about April to be took serious now, hasn't he? 
What about poor old Martin Murray? He looked like a car crash, didn't he? He'd just been battered. It was just that was terrible matchmaking. That I just thought, all right, it would have paid it for Martin Murray. And I know my father. We used to work with Martin Murray's dad, and everything my dad told me about that Martin Murray was what a lovely humble man he is. Yeah, but I think he's got to get out of boxing. It would just, it would just. Have, the show for Billy Joe Saunders to pepper him all night. He couldn't get near him clean. Billy Joe were dancing around him all night, and it it was just a pro proper mismatch in my eyes. Yeah, yeah. Martin Murray didn't throw anything, did he? Nothing. I'd like to see copy box numbers, would you? Well, I've been told the low because. And it's probably the lowest output of any any world title fight from both of them over over twelve rounds going back thirty six year to beginning a super middleweight division. It was that bad, wasn't it? The out punch output. It was. I thought Paul Smith against Suga were bad, but that but that that was shocking. That was shocking. For a world title fight, awful. I'm just glad that. Billy and Mark Tibbs got the win and they live to fight another day, but Bill's got to be better than that, hasn't he? To, to, to Gazzy. fight guys, hasn't he? He's got to be. And I think he's a 160. I don't think he's a 168, Sean, do you? No. Do you think that would have been a good fight against Demetrius Andrade, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, why can't they make that fight? They're both... Both Eddie Earn fighters. Why can't Andrade I fight? That's why I mentioned him. I think Andre. I think that uh, Andrade, that American lad. I think he's got some good skills, and that's all I want to see Billy Saunders up against. Not Martin Money, where he's just punching his head in. Because don't take me wrong, Martin Money, been a great fighter. <laughs> he's a really tough man, Russ. Yeah. I can remember watching him on Box Nation when he went to Buenos Aires and he fought Martinez. He was spitting on him when he went in the ring and I thought he did really well that night. I saw him fight in Germany where he did really well. He did really well against Triple G, but Triple G got him out of there when he was in his prime. And I just think that Billy Joe Saunders won 100% because he should have got Martin Money out of there, shouldn't he? What I can't understand is Macklin's fought Triple G. Uh, who else has fought Triple G? Rocky Fielding's fought Canelo. Mark Murray's fought Triple G. Yeah. Uh, you've got all these fighters from UK that have fought them. But Billy Joe's not fought Triple G or Canelo. Kel Brooks fought uh, Triple G. Amir Khan's fought Canelo. Liam Smith's fought Canelo. Billy's not fought. Canelo or Triple G, but everybody else has. And now he's bro now Liam Smith's brother, Callum, he's going to fight Canelo. I mean, who else has fought Canelo as well from the UK? There's another one, isn't there? Liam Smith. Liam Smith. So you've got all these people who are fighting Canelo and Golovkin. Billy, Billy's talked a good game, and it hasn't happened, has it, for some reason. Last five years since he's won world title, he's not fought Canelo. Or Triple G Brazil belts at 160 and 168. So does Billy Joe Saunders just want to go through the rest of his career being an undefeated champion? A bit like Carl Zaggy did when he got bogged down in that long run he had. Or does Billy Joe want to step up to the plate? Well, we're going to find out because we keep saying this. Oh, it's going to be next fight, next fight, Billy Joe Saunders. Oh, he's going to get round to, or he's injured, or he's pulled out, or they're not happy with money, or the training camp ain't long enough, or he's banned, or he's been fined, or there's always seen to be some, and the, 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 it's all, it's, he's running out of excuses now, Bill, isn't he? And he's wasting his talent away, unless he can knuckle down and show us what, he's, what we believe he has. Because he could dominate for another 10 years, him, you know, at middleweight, if he wanted to. Fantastic fighter. I love him, man. I love to watch him. It's just a shame. Do you think he's this weight issue that he's got? It goes to like, he must cut to 200 pounds and then stripping down. And every time they're offering these fights, do you think he's saying, well, I need a tune up fight. I need to get down in weight because that's not good enough for fans, is it, Russ? 
can't have tune up fights as world title defences. It's shocking, isn't it? Martin Murray, 13 month out at Ring, and all of a sudden he's placed in the top 15 rankings out of nowhere. And then he's classed as a voluntary defence. I mean, who's signing off on this? The WBO. They're to blame here, the WBO, for sanctioning it. I wouldn't have had a problem with a fight if the belt weren't on the line, but it just discredits the belt, which is already a belt that gets a bit of stick anyway. But, well, this is how I look at it. I could be wrong, but I just want to see Billy in some proper fights now. But we keep saying that, don't we? Well, we've got one coming up, haven't we? Callum Smith against Canelo. That's a proper fight, isn't it? It's an hardcore wet dream. Elite. Right, elite. It's an elite fight, isn't it? A ring magazine champion against the superstar of the sport. And don't forget, Callum Smith's 27 and 0, and he's not got out of third gear yet. He's already picked up, he's won belts at all levels, and he's got a world title fight and a ring mag belt. So he's got to be given respect. Whether he's done it by being maneuvered through choppy waters, is him and his team that have got they've got there, aren't they? And they, another thing as well, Beefy Smith got to fight Canelo as well and got paid. So we, we have to give these people credit for for testing themselves. But like I said, there's a lot of fights not getting made, isn't there? I want to see Saunders Eubank. I don't want to see Martin Murray fight again because he shot to pieces and he was two a year ago. But I want to see Saunders against Eubank rematch, and I want to see Saunders John Ryder rematch. Yeah, two fights I want to see. Russ, you took words right out of my mouth about Chris Eubank. What a fire, Bibber. If it looks at it now, Eubank's going to go down a different channel. He's, he's mandated to Charlo, isn't he? Which yeah. I think that'd be a fantastic fight, him and Charlo. What a test for Charlo. Yeah. All right, then. What? Do you want to move on to uh, Johnny Nelson's uh, going on about Tennyson? We've gone on. We've said that. And we've well, talked we've about that. Bro. All right, then. What, what, what next are we up to now? Uh, BT show now, pal. BT. Uh well, what do you think about it? What did you think to uh, Yard against Arthur? Who did you think won? Arthur. Well, I, listen, Russ, I text, uh, when we were speaking on WhatsApp last night, uh, I thought it was good enough to uh, be a draw. I kept saying to you, you said, yeah, we're going to get him knocked out. And I kept saying, I thought, yeah, we're being patient, but I think we... Fitness issues. I think he left it a bit late. He put it on him in the last couple of rounds, but what a jab. Good chin. Uh, it, it would do because there were no exchanges in middle of the ring, but that, you've got to give Arthur respect for fighting his fight. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, Lyndon Arthur's trainer goes under radar, Pat Barrett, I think. I don't think he gets as much kudos as other trainers because you don't see Pat Barrett hanging out at back of IFL. they doing interviews all the time. He just goes about his business and he's got to be given credit for what he's done with Lyndon Arthur and Zelfa Barrett. Massive, massive credit. And like I said, they beat the big, the big, the lion, didn't they? The lion's in the hat camp. Well, they beat the lion, didn't they? I beat Lyndon Arthur beat not only beat him, but schooled him with a jab. He took uh, a big right hand off yard, didn't he? I thought I, I, when we were watching him fight with his jab, I thought there was something wrong with his hand. His hand, yeah. Really? yeah end of day last end of day last night, the lion had food poisoning, didn't he? Food poisoning. I don't know, but the lion ended up beat he got beat. Yard lost. We mind all that, it were a robbery and all this and look. But the main talking point should be Ian John Lewis's card. He had it by for yard by six rounds. He's always there or thereabouts, isn't it? Ian John Lewis, Mr. Incompetent. Just what has he been smoking? Same as what Johnny Nelson's been smoking. You think? Definitely, yeah. He's got a bit of cush. Yeah. Been on, yeah, he's been on the he's been on the berries. They've been on summer because if he's going to yard by six rounds, but the other two judges add it to Arthur, how many rounds is he and John Lewis out? 
And will he be getting demoted for another poor scorecard? Well, let, well let's hope that the boxing board do something. But Robert Smith won't do a thing. Will you, Robert Smith? Your weapon. Come see me. So, do you know what I mean? All right, then. Uh, where, what next for Bricktop? Does he jump in River Thames off Battersea Bridge? Or what? What next for him? Is there any way back for uh, Frank Warren, a.k.a. the former number one promoter in the UK? Is there any way back for Frank now? Dubois has been beat. Yard's been beat. Uh, Tyson Fury's parked up. So there is big free guns. What next? Um, it's, it looks like his yeah, it's, it's stables are all, all it's doing is depleting, isn't it? Well, I think Frank will come back. I don't know where because I don't think he's been in a worse position for a long time. Probably about five years ago, four years, maybe six, maybe seven years ago, he were in a tight spot. But I don't know all this rebuilding, and he's left with best fighter he's got now who's coming through is Dennis McCann, isn't it? I'm going to speak about him next, Rush, yeah. yeah go on, what do you think about him? Well, for age 19, I thought Pedro Matisse was very competitive and he tried his heart, yeah. For a young lad at 19, his chin got tested. Uh, he's got a good variety, but his main attribute. I can't put my neck finger on it at a minute, but he's got fantastic, great footwork. It reminds me of somebody. I just can't put my finger on it, Russ. Do you, do you agree with me? Do you think he's got good footwork? That's his best attribute. Yeah, Dennis McCann's going to be the next big star for small man. I agree I'm, with you. That's what I think. He yeah. got hit a few times hard last night and it, it didn't seem to bother him. He kept coming back. That's what I like about a fighter. When they get hit on chin and they come back, yeah? That's when you know they're elite and what they're, they could be elite and warriors, yeah. That what I call throwbacks and mules, yeah. Yeah. There's only yeah. there's only 10% in boxing, yeah. And I'm sort of people that have got it all. And let's just hope he's got it all because I agree with you. Fantastic little fighter. Yeah, go on, what else? Uh to tell you the truth, I only watched them two while we're looking after my son. Them, them two won't be too spot. Oh, I'm gonna say that little uh, video <laughs> Bunty put together for Frank Warren. Did you, you enjoy it? You what? Little video Bunty put together for Frank Warren on BT Sports last night. Did you enjoy it? The uh, 40 year in boxing thing. I, mean, I haven't seen that. What yeah, is it? What, what's it called? It bunted the thing called 40 years in boxing. It started off from his first, first promotion venue to his last, you know what I mean? And it showed him as a young man and where he'd come in 40 years. Bloomsbury but I heard a lot Hotel, great. Yeah. Sorry? Bloomsbury Hotel is first show, 1980, wasn't it? That was it. Two heavyweights, Americans, weren't they, I believe? Yeah. yeah I do know the story, but I haven't seen that, uh, what you're on about with Bunty, but I'll catch up with that. It was it was good, Russ. Actually, yeah. All right, I, like, look, I like a bit of nostalgia looking back in time, do you? Yeah. Do you uh, see Frank rebuild going through a rebuilding phase now? Well, he's got to, hasn't he? Yeah. He'll have to knock. He'll have to get some scouts out there, won't he? Do you think he needs to work with Eddie here more than ever now, or do you think it's best that they're kept apart? Well, I think it on Eddie Hills, as you call him. I just think it's arrogant. I think. He's got cream at minute and he's going places in with his disown in America and I don't think he's got time of day for Frank. And don't get me wrong about Frank, yeah. He's been face of boxing in England for a long time. He's been through a lot. He's been through some bad times and good times. He always comes out smelling the roses and I think he still will, you know. Yeah. But I heard a tale of, I heard a tale of Grapevine that his promotion firm, his uncle, were a gangster from London called Billy Hill. And oh, Billy Hill, what is... Well, I don't want to talk about stuff like that, mate. Don't. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was just going to say that he was given his promotion business. Well, that's just hearsay, isn't it? Rumour and hearsay. You get me. You, know, you can't come out with stuff like that. You'll get me a legal letter off for brick top. Or he might come and cut me Jacobs off. You never know, do you? All right, then. Uh, or feed me to pigs, which is what I don't want. Uh, 
But is there a way back for Frank and is he going to rebuild? Yard Arthur, should there be a rematch? They'll scream for it. Will Dubois come back? He's, a, he's probably two years off being in the same position he's in now. Uh, so he could be behind the door, behind the ball for two years now, Frank. And Eddie's not going to do him any favours. He's going to want to try and out him now, now that he's had a couple of losses, Frank. He's gonna. He's not gonna get any opponents for yard. He's gonna freeze them out. Uh, so I don't know what's gonna happen, but it's not exciting for Frank. He's had a bit of a crap week, and I just when it looked like he was in a strong position, he's pulled out the Tyson Fury Cabell fight, and he's not put that on. And it's not like Frank to go back on his word, is it? No, no. I'd have enjoyed that fight. What Cabell Tyson Fury? No, I just for just. Just to see, uh, to get Tyson, keep Tyson Fury active more than all, really. Fight like that. Come oh, on. I know what you. I, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Then, yeah, you put me in my place there. Yeah. You know, we don't. Yeah, you can understand. Yeah, getting him active in that, but Caballel, come on. You know, he he, he don't get juices flowing that fight, does it? And it'd be pay per view as well because Tyson's a big star now. So yeah. I, I don't know. I think Tyson could be parked up for months, but I did call it in April, if you look on my channel. I don't want to say that I told you all, but I shook up the world. All right, then, what else have we got on agenda? The Spence show, Garcia? Yeah, yeah, usually uh, watching your show a bit and usually not wrong with your predictions, Russ. I got the Yard, I got the yard Arthur one wrong, but... Uh, now that Lyndon Arthur won and how he did it, I think he's got a massive future. He's going to be a big star. But if you want to talk about Spence against Garcia, I did say it'd be on points, enough for Spence. You said uh, he had a car crash and this and that. Well, look, it's like what I've just told Dale. He's just got through a 12-week camp. He's done all his sparring. He's passed all his check weigh-ins. And he's also... Uh, He's passed all his check weigh-ins and he's signed the medical form to say he's fit to fight. So, and he woff it. Yeah. He got through the camp, so he, he didn't have any hang-ups. Special fighters that are champions like that, they don't have hang-ups about what's gone on in the past. They look, to, for, look forward. And I think Garcia now could be just a gatekeeper now. I agree with you, yeah. He's slipping he's into it. a mode. He don't throw enough leather for me, Garcia. I know he's a counter puncher, yeah. But he don't throw enough leather. But Edel Spence last night, he was like Eddie uh, Eddie's book. He was really relentless. He was fantastic. I got up and watched it. And uh, Eddie's book that's not in top twenty. Yeah, yeah. But uh, best selling book list. I'm not a betting man, Russ. Yeah. But last night, I looked at stats and my uh, daughter's boyfriend put me a bet on and I put a tenner on and a double, yeah? I put Lyndon Arthur, Arthur to beat Yard because of odds, yeah? And I put Danny Garcia to beat Errol Spence. You might think I'm stupid, yeah? But I put the money on and it let me down for £180, and uh, Garcia. And I just... But after Spencer's last fight with Sean Porter, because Sean Porter put some pressure on him in, his, in that fight, Russ. Yeah. Before car crash. And then with car accident, I thought, I put the money on, hoping that he wasn't going to be come back the special fighter that he is. We saw it against Kel Brook. Kel Brook did brilliant for six rounds against him. It was 50-50 it and then he's relentless, them body shots, how he rips him in. And he gets stronger as fight goes on and I like it about him. I really, really like him. I've watched him since he knocked uh, Bundu out. He moved Frankie Gavin for. Can you remember that Bundu? Yeah. Edward Bundu. Well, Frank, he, he had a good fight with Frankie Gavin. I was televised on Channel 5. And I started watching Spence because I started to see it on a uh, fight type in America. And I saw him knock that Bundu out. I know he an old man, but I thought, well, this lad's got what it takes, but... Sean Porter roughed him up, I thought, in that last fight. Yeah, he finished. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, pal. Okay, now. You go down other avenues, don't you? Don't worry about it, mate. It'll come as you get... As you do more of these, you'll get more confident in front of the camera. 
I think that's about it, really. We've covered uh, a lot of a lot of stuff, haven't we? Uh, is there anything you want to say or you'd like to add, or you know what? what well, what? I'd love. I just can't wait for that next mega fight when we've really got juices flowing. I'd like to see Crawford Spence. I don't want to see Spence fight Pacquiao. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to see that fight. I think that'd be a really, really good fight. Danny Garcia. I did. I get him. Maybe two rounds out of that fight, and he did all right, but he only come on last 20 seconds at fight. He met him at middle at ring last 20 seconds, and he's in with a few punches. I just wish he could have done it from start. Like you say, he's a gatekeeper, he's been a fantastic fighter. But oh, my oh, noise what's coming from his camp seems to come from his father. Do you agree? <laughs> his best wins, Amir Khan, years and years ago, isn't it? Well, right fight, wasn't he? He was losing that fight, wasn't he? Yeah, and he pulled it out of the bag with a left hook, didn't he? Got a right left hook on him, but he didn't... He threw a few punches last night, but... No, he, he don't... He don't throw, there's not enough activity with him. He's, he don't throw enough punches. Yeah. All right, then. Well, thanks for coming on, Sean. You're a top man. You've got gonads of steel coming on here. Because there's a lot of people that talk the talk on social media, but they don't go, go and do what you're doing, mate, in front of the camera. So I take me out of to you. Uh, all right. So thanks for coming on. I hope you have a good Sunday. Uh, I'll probably get this out. Do you want this video out with an entrance at beginning and end? Do you want it or, do, or are you not bothered? I like the new entrance. I think it makes a good channel look better us than the new thing, yeah. Put it on with that, mate. Right. Well, it'll not go out today, then Sunday, because I have to send them off and they have to be played about because I can't do it. I'm thick. So, all right, then. Thanks for coming on and you take care. All right. Can I just say something? Thanks, thanks for putting up with me, Russ. And uh, no, I think no. I did well. I think I did well. Uh, I didn't. I only went down Garden Path on last uh, subject. So, yeah. I think I'll... I'm doing a bit better this time. I'll find my equilibrium and. You'll find you what? Equilibrium, my fine balance. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, you, you, you will find, you'll go find it. See if you can find it, and uh, I'll send you a porky badge in post, an hardcore porky badge. All right. <laughs> you porky, yo. You take care. You got a dry sense of humour, you mate. All you right. dry. Have All a good right. Sunday. All right, you take care, mate. Bye bye. I'll turn it off right in time now. All right then. Bye. Well, that was Sean, the dripping tap from Barnsley. Uh, I enjoyed that. Bit of light-hearted entertainment, but he loves his boxing, so he has to be given respect because there's a lot of people, like I said, who chat nonsense but don't want to come on here. But what do I say to that? There's talkers and there's smoky bacon walkers. All right. Peace out. Peace <laughs> out.